everybody it's your girl urban farm sister so i haven't done a live on instagram in such a long time i thought i would uh come on here and answer any of you guys questions you might have about uh insects and arthropods in the garden so how are you guys doing today hey everybody <laughs> So, bees got no knees, <laughs> like your name. Uh, she, he or she wants to know about um, cucumber beetles. Um, so, pu cucumber beetles, there's two types. There's striped cucumber beetles, um, and then there's the spotted ones. Um, <clears throat> they are major uh, pests. Some of them can actually... Um, you know, transmit viruses and uh, bacteria from other plants. Uh, the best way to deal with them is you can uh, try to apply diatomaceous earth to your plants uh, to prevent them from chewing on the leaves. Um, but their uh, larvae also live down into the, in the soil. Um, so you want to try to control them as well. Um, best way is, the best way in the beginning is if you can actually put something over your plants to prevent them from accessing it. Because um, once they actually get in, um, it's kind of hard to control them, even with the diatomaceous earth. It, it has, you know, limited effect on them. Um, but they will, um, it will have a little effect of controlling them. But the best thing to do is, like, when in the beginning, if you're going to plant something, is to use, like, insect netting. Also, if you've had problems with them in the past, do not you do not want to plant the same plants in that area the following year. So you want to do what is called crop rotation to prevent them from um, you know coming back and you know planting the same thing that they feed on. The uh, I believe the striped ones they're they're kind of like a generalist pest, so they feed on a lot of different plants. While I think the spotted ones, or it could be the other way around, I can't which, remember which one, but the spotted ones are more. Uh, Specifically, they feed on, um, uh, you know, cucurbit plants, which are like the squash plants, the, the cucumbers, and things like that. The other one, I forget, I have to look it up. One of them is a generalist, so they'll feed on even things that are not uh, those type of plants, squash plants and things. They'll feed on other stuff as well. Uh, but the best thing to do, like I said, is to use insect netting, try diatomaceous earth if, if you already have a problem with them, and then do crop rotation. Hi, Sellers Kitchen. I'm doing pretty well. How about yourself? Oh, I see you say you're doing well. We got the striped ones. What's the best way to protect your my mini organic backyard garden from little bugs without killing them? Um, what well, it solely depends. Uh, chocolate, chocolate alchemist. It it solely depends on what you're trying to prevent uh, from feeding on your plants and what you're actually growing. So if you're growing whatever, the best thing to do is to start out with a barrier to keep them off, keep any insects and arthropods off your plant. And that would be using some type of insect netting. Um, also growing maybe like in a different environment, say you have a greenhouse or something growing indoors, that would prevent insects from, uh, you know, arthropods from getting to your things. Also, when you bring in new plants, you want to do what is called quarantining to keep, uh, other insects that may be on those other plants from actually invading your garden things. Good afternoon. Hold on, I have a question here. Caterpillars. Caterpillars eating up my collars. What should I do? Okay, so I have a whole video on um, my YouTube about caterpillars that are eating up brassica plants. So brassica plants are anything like your collars, your kale, uh, cabbage, radishes, all types of things like that. Um, basically, what you're gonna have to do, now that you have caterpillars on there, there's two things you're gonna have to do. First of all, you're gonna have to hand remove any caterpillars that you see, and then you're gonna spray a um, product on them called BT. BT is short for uh, Bacillus thuringiensis. It's a type of bacteria that only specific target, specifically targets uh, caterpillars. Um, so basically, Hand removal, spray it with the BT. 
it's going to take the BT about 24 to 48 hours to actually take effect on the caterpillars. So that's why I say you want to hand remove because until that until that bacteria kicks in inside their body, um, they're still going to be feeding. Um, so you just want to make sure that you're removing any caterpillars that you see. Uh, the most common caterpillars that you're going to find on your uh, brassica plants are cabbage loopers, the uh, imported cabbage worm, which, you know, if you ever see those little white butterflies flying over your collars and things, those are the parents of those particular uh, caterpillars. And then there's another one called the cross-striped uh, cabbage worm, and it's kind of like a black and white, almost yellowish, greenish color. Um, but they will actually feed on the leaves. Now, there are some other caterpillars that can become generalist pests, but those are the most common ones. Now, if you spray the BT on there, um, you're totally going to um, control any caterpillars that may be feeding on there. Um, also, in the beginning, like like with any other other uh, other plants that you're trying to grow, if you put up insect netting, you prevent the parents from actually finding the uh, host plant so that they do not lay their eggs on there, and uh, then you won't have any problems with caterpillars. Also, you can. You can actually uh, catch the adults as well. Get a butterfly net, and anytime you see them flying around, just catch them and do whatever you feel fit to, to get rid of them. Uh, Kuka Girl says, Good afternoon from Dominica. I have something eating my lemon tree leaves. A Cuban friend said, It's the black ants. Wondering how to control them, and have you heard of that too? I haven't heard of black ants eating lemon trees um, if you're actually seeing ants on your lemon tree you probably have a problem with aphids um, aphids are these little tiny insects now that could, that could be what they're calling the black ants uh, aphids can be different colors one of the colors is black but there's yellow green every species had they might have a different color and things um, but if you control aphids, then you control ants. So if you're seeing actual ants on there, you probably have aphids on there. I have a whole video on my YouTube about uh, controlling aphids. Um, basically, ants actually farm aphids. So what they do is they treat them like cattle because the aphids produce a sugary substance called honeydew that the ants love. And as a result of that, they will actually take aphids from plant to plant and uh, so they can feed. So the aphids, they have this piercing sucking mouth part. It kind of looks like a needle. And what they do is they stick it down in the stem of the plant and they suck the sap out of the plant. Um, and then they kind of engorge themselves. So what happens is once they feed so much, they excrete this honeydew and it's like, it's like sugar water. And the ants love that. And so what the ants will do, like I say, they'll take them from plant to plant so they can feed, but they also protect them. Um, if you've ever gone onto a plant that had um, aphids and ants on it, the ants will actually come, become very defensive even towards you. Um, cause they want to protect their, you know, their little cattle that, uh, you know, people call them their little, little cows. Um, but yeah, so if you get the aphids under control, which is usually by spraying, um, a, I always recommend either, um, neem oil or some type of essential oil, water and castile soap mixture. Um, and I have a whole video explaining how to mix that up and stuff with the aphid, uh, video that I have on my YouTube. Um, but just spraying that on there will actually... Uh, control the aphids and then the ants will actually leave once the aphids are no longer there now there are some aphids usually aphids don't they don't cause a lot of damage they can cause damage um, but there are some aphids that can uh, actually transmit different plant viruses and things like that so just be aware of that if you see aphids on your plants let's see Chocolate Alchemist said, gracias, very good advice, much appreciated. You're welcome, de nada. Uh, tons of white butterflies. Uh, so anybody else have any other questions? No aphids, the black ants are huge. They prefer old wood, so I was surprised. He said that, but no one else could tell me what they are. I do have the problem with other plants, but different types of ants. Can you take a picture of the ants and send it to me? They prefer old wood, so I was surprised he said that, but no one else could tell me what they are. If you could take a picture of them, maybe I can better identify them.
how to treat some some tough sod. I don't understand your question, Chaz, and waterfalls. How to treat some tough sod. Amber Larissa said, how do you keep snails out? Um, you can set up our beer traps for snails and slugs. What they'll do is they'll actually go in and feed on um, the actual beer. If you put beer in a trap, they'll climb into the container and they'll actually drown. They're attracted to the fermenting, um, uh, the sugars and things that are inside of beer when it, you know, it ferments those plants and things. Uh, so, um, if you put that in a container, you don't want to put it flush with the ground. What you want to do is put it in a container so other insects can't crawl in there. The slugs will be attracted to that, and then they'll actually drown in that container. Um, but again, like with all things, if you can put up some type of barrier in the beginning, that will prevent a lot of different arthropods and uh, insects and things from actually invading your plants. Galanda B said... I came late, so I hope it was available later because the aphids. Let's say carpenter ants are big and black. Maybe it's those. We'll do that tomorrow. Farming farm is in the mountains. What would be the best way to break it up? Oh, you talking about breaking up the side? Are you trying to till it? Or are you trying to farm on that where the side is? Because it might be to your advantage to actually plow the area first and then actually till it. Or they have these things too where you can actually strip the side off. I forget the name of the actual tool where it actually can uh, cut through the side and you can cut through that thatch I think it's a thatcher and uh it'll cut through there and you can actually remove the side that way and then go about uh, preparing the soil if that's what you're trying to do uh the best way to, to amend the soil what are you trying to what are you trying to improve it from is it what are, what's the issues with the soil is it is it too acidic too basic uh is it um uh, what else are you trying to replace nutrients I mean the best way to do is to actually do what is called green compost where you actually plant a uh, a cover crop and then you actually till that cover crop into the soil um, I don't know if that if that's is that what you're looking for um, also use an insect I'm sorry <laughs> uh, some type of animal manure um, that's been composted um, but the best thing to do is to do the cover crops and then actually push, uh, till them into there. And you'll have that, you know, nitrogen from those plants that'll start to break down. Uh, some common cover crops are things like um, buckwheat, uh, clover, things like that. Which, uh, are you, are you in the United States? It's very basic foxtail has been growing there for years. Kuka girl, thank you. Oh, you're welcome, Kuka girl. I hope I'm saying that right. <laughs> uh, basically, you're gonna have to if if it keeps growing back, um, you can't allow it to grow until it grows to seed, because then you're gonna have to deal with those seeds every year. Um, so anytime it starts to seed over or get to that point, you're gonna have to destroy the plants. Uh, again, you might want to use the thatcher to try to get rid of that thatch area uh, and go that route. Or you need to plant maybe some plants that uh, that will uh, actually compete with that grass so it'll out-compete out the grass when it's growing. So anybody else have any other insect questions or arthropod questions? Anybody having problems with um, insects on their tomato plants or insects on their pepper plants, eggplant, all the nightshades? Hi, 
Hi Shane, how are you? Hi Lotus Brene Green Abstract 713, how are you guys doing? Hi Free Bird Yogi. All right, any insect questions? What are you trying to grow uh, in that area, Chaz, in waterfalls? Oh, you're welcome, Queen Fee. Doing well, love what you do. Thank you for spreading the knowledge. Oh, uh, you're welcome, Shane Kugler. Yeah, my peppers getting something on the leaves, but not aphids. Do you actually see insects on the leaves? Or are you seeing damage on the on the leaves? Uh, Cougar girls, are you seeing damage on the leaves or are you seeing insects? Yeah, the uh, that Honda tiller is very good. I actually bought that from uh, Home Depot. It was one of their, um, you know, they have the rentals where you can rent the tillers for like, uh, you can rent them for like a day or two at a certain rate where well, they actually sell that stuff after they take it out of um, you know rotation and they sell it so I got a really good deal on it uh, it still works great I've had it for about uh, three or four years now um, but yeah it, it does a good job it says that this year that I have this 10 acres that I'm working on that was not going to be enough so I had to you know I end up purchasing an old tractor I'm still trying to get a new one and I've also got a tiller to go on there. Um, but yeah, it, it does a pretty good job for a, a small space. But anything like that has acres, you're going to probably want to have to get a, a actual tractor. I believe the spotted lanterns are from uh, China originally. If it's not China, it's one of those Asian countries. Uh, they were brought over here on some uh, cargo. Damage lighter. How did you get here? How did they get here? They are super cool looking. Yeah, they're super cool looking. Um, but they're introduced invasive species. Um, I know they're a sap feeder. Um, I haven't known of them to actually transmit any disease here in the United States. Um, but I just, I'm, I'm assuming that they're treating them as an invasive species, so that's why they want them gone um, anytime you find them. Has slugs already been talked about as they love my kale? Yeah, I did talk about slugs, um, but I can re re uh, recap them again. I said you want to set up a beer, a beer trap. So what you're gonna do is take a container, uh, like a, something that's kind of, it's shallow, but it's it's not shallow enough to where, you know, if a slug crawls in there, it'll get stuck in there. You wanna have enough liquid, which is the actual beer, uh, so that the slugs, when they fall in there, they'll drown. Um, but basically, the beer, the fermentation in the beer, it actually attracts the slugs to the beer, and they'll crawl in there and they'll drown, and they'll attract them away from your plants. Um, people used to make the traps, they would dig a hole and put the trap uh, in a hole, but what happened is you would also trap other insects and arthropods in there as well. So you just want a container like a yogurt container or something, put some beer in there and, and the slugs will actually climb up. Slugs and snails will climb up, they'll attract it to that smell of the beer and uh, that will control them. Thank you. We tried doing some veggie gardening, but we had already a bad earwig problem this year, April and May. What were the earwigs feeding on? Um, Because earwigs, they can go both ways. They can be scavengers, but then they can also be predators. Um, So what, what were you growing that they were feeding on? Or did you actually see them feeding 
on something or could it have been something else feeding on your plants and the earwigs were there feeding on it? Wolf Mountain Organics. Hi, Wolf Mountain Organics. Neat trick with the beer. Yes, the beer will work with the slugs. Squash vine borer. <laughs> yes. Um, so those are hard. They're hard to control once they get inside the plant. Um, so your best method of controlling them is knowing what the adults look like so that you can trap them and you can use yellow sticky traps for the adults. There's yellow, there's yellow traps um, that attract certain insects. Certain insects like the color yellow. And the reason they like the color yellow is you, if you think about the flowers on a squash plant, they're always yellow and that's what attracts them to those squash plants. So if you have these yellow streaky traps, what it is, it'll attack the adults to there, they'll stick to there and they won't be able to actually lay the eggs on the plants. Um, also, if you see adults, uh, like I said, you need to know what they look like. They kind of look like wasps. They're actually a moth. Um, they're yellow and, I'm sorry, they're orange and black. And I have some video of them on my, um, it's on my Facebook, it's on my YouTube, but it's like back some years, so you might not be able to search for it. Um, but if you attract the adults, they won't be able to lay the eggs on there. Now, if they, if you see adults around your plants and you once you figure out what they look like, um, and you see them around your plant, then you're going to want to look for those eggs. Uh, the eggs, they're very tiny, they're brown, they kind of look like the squash bug eggs, but they're laid singly, and a lot of times they lay it right at the base of the plant, and they're kind of smaller, a little bit smaller than the squash bug eggs, but they're that brown color. If you find the eggs, you want to destroy the eggs too. Um, you also want to spray the, as much of the plant as you can with BT, um, because again, this larva is an actual caterpillar. Um, it'll turn into that moth once it, you know, goes through its life cycle. Um, so if you spray the plant with BT, if you miss some eggs and they hatch, if that BT is present and they'll start feeding on it, they will actually consume that BT and then, you know, it'll kill them. Um, if they've gotten into the plant, you can do a few things. Um, some people, they'll split the, the stem where they see the, the squash vine borer damage. They'll split that, take the squash vine borer out, and they can bind the stem back up, or sometimes they'll just bury that part of the stem back in the soil to cover it up. Um, you can do that. You can also inject BT into the spot where you see the squash vine borer has, has been feeding. The only issue is if it, if you're injecting it and it does, and if it's, it's if it's done, you know, burrow this way through there a good distance and you squirt that in there and it doesn't reach it it's not going to be effective you can also try to figure out like how far it's up in there and try to head it off with the bt injections and things but it's kind of hard figuring that out um so the best thing to do is to try to plant um i'm sorry try to control the adults and then there's another thing where you can actually plant when they're when um their, you know, their mating season is kind of out of season at that point. Um, they're usually very active at the end of June, mid-June into mid-July is when they're most active. They're out trying to find mates and things like that. If you can hold off planting, uh, you're going to reduce the number of uh, squash vine borers that are available to reproduce. Also, you can plant cultivars of squash plant. They are resistant to squash vine borer damage. There's certain plants that they like because uh, the the actual stems, they're the right fibrous conditions that the the uh, larva can feed on. Um, you know, they can burrow easily through there. While some plants they have like really tough uh, fiber, and that the the, the the caterpillars just don't want to feed on that. So. Um, there's some cultivars. You can actually search on Google and see which cultivars or squash plants are kind of squash vine borer resistant. Uh, but the best thing is going to be is try to prevent the adults from accessing the plants, uh, which is kind of hard unless you're going to hand pollinate your squash plants. Um, you could put up some insect netting and you, they definitely won't be able to access it. Uh, but other than that, you're going to have to just control the adults with uh, uh, sticky traps, 
remove eggs you may see, spray the plant um, with BT on a continuous basis. Uh, you might want to spray BT like every 10 to 14 days. Uh, if it rains, you're going to want to spray it a lot sooner um, because what happens is it'll, you know, the rain will wash the BT off the plant and things like that. Um, remove eggs. If you, if you find a squash borer in there, you can try to extract it out. Um, if you have a plant that has, you know, succumbed to a squash vine borer attack, you want to remove that plant out of there because that larva is still living inside of there and it's still feeding and eventually it'll come out and pupate and then it'll turn into an adult. Uh, so you need to think about that as well. Um, but yeah, that's the only thing right now. That's one insect I really want to do a, a, a research study on because they, they come every year and they destroy people's plants, especially in a, on a small garden setting. Like they'll be out in the fields where the people are growing like, you know, thousands of squash plants, but they have room to lose a few plants versus, you know, the home, the home grower, there might be only growing like 10 plants. And if a squash vine borer comes in, it'll wipe them out. Like, so yeah, that's one of those insects I'm, I'm, I'm I really want to do a research study on and I'm trying to figure out like how I go about, like, I don't know what research I would do. But I want to figure out how to control them uh, before they get to the point where they're actually destroying the plants. Uh, chocolate alchemist, what is BT? So BT, again, I explained it at the beginning. It's uh, it's a bacteria called Bacillus thuringiensis. Um, there's different types of B B BT bacteria. Um, the one I'm specifically talking about right now is it only affects caterpillars. Uh, there are BT. Uh, for mosquitoes and flies and things if you guys have ever seen those mosquito dunks they have bt bacteria but it's, it's a specific bt bacteria that targets um flies um there's also a bt that targets uh beetles certain beetles um and they're you know they find bt bacteria. they they you know they're, they're found in the soil so they're finding different species that can target certain insects uh bt bacillus thuringiensis uh, the one I'm talking about for the caterpillars, it specifically targets caterpillars. So what happens is the caterpillars will eat the bacteria. Uh, it'll give them like a bacterial infection. Uh, it also gives them toxins. It's kind of like when we, uh, well, if a person has botulism poisoning, um, it's the same thing in the, in the, uh, the caterpillar. Uh, that toxin will actually kill the caterpillar, but it has to, it has to take effect. So it takes about 24 to 48 hours where it takes effect. But during that same time frame, they're still feeding. So that's why I always recommend if you find caterpillars on your plants to just hand remove them, uh, but still spray with that BT to uh, add extra um, protection. Peppers, the leaves look damaged, lighter, and spotty. Okay, you could have um, on your pepper plants, it could be a nutrient issue or you could have things like stink bugs feeding on there. Um, if you see stink bugs or anything like that on there, the best thing you can do is hand remove them. There really isn't any organic type of control for stink bugs. Um, again, with the uh, plants, when you put things out there using insect barriers to keep insects off is your best uh first line of defense uh if you didn't do that then um with with the like stink bugs with the adults since they fly it's hard to like spray anything on them so the best thing you can do if you see adults is to actually just collect them if you can um and remove them from the plant now if you see nymphs or if you see eggs definitely remove any eggs you might see uh, if you see nymphs on there, you can actually spray the nymphs with that um, castile neem oil water solution I was talking about earlier. Uh, and again, that that um, recipe is in my AFIT video on my YouTube channel. So if you want to look that up, you can. Uh, my YouTube channel is the same name, Urban Farm Sister. Hey everybody that just came in. So anybody else have any questions? Um, we already talked about aphids. Anybody having problems with fungus nets?
So fungus gnats, they are those gnats you find flying around your plants, especially if you have indoor house plants, um, or if you have um, like a container garden, and if you've watered them a lot, you'll see these little gnats flying around there. Is anybody having problems with those? Or noticed them, especially if you if you're growing things indoors. <clears throat> I know they can become a problem, especially uh, on indoor plants. I was wondering what those flies are. Yes, so those are called fungus gnats. And the adults are not the problem. Their larvae are the problem. Um, but if you have adults present, you're going to have larvae. So basically, with the fungus gnats, you are overwatering your plant. Or there's water sitting there, and what is happening, fungus is growing. Um, in the soil as well as your roots are probably rotting um, so these fungus gnats what they do is they come along they, they they the adults are attracted to that smell of you know the fungi growing on the soil uh, the plant roots rotting and what they do is they lay their eggs in the soil so when their eggs hatch it's a little larva maggot and the maggots what they do is they're actually going to feed on that decomposing plant matter but what happens is they also start to feed on the plant roots and they can actually kill the plant. Um, so what you want to do with fungus gnats is you want to you want to take when I was talking about those mosquito dunks that have that BT in there. Um, there's a different type of BT that specifically targets uh, certain flies. And so mosquitoes are flies, fungus gnats are flies um, uh, and uh, drain flies. You can use that. Um, mosquito dunks on those particular things so if you if you find the mosquito dunks they also have what are called mosquito bits and there's these little things they also have the bt on them as well you can get this stuff from any of the hardware stores like home depot or lowe's they usually have it in the front it'll be for mosquito control but you'll also see on the label it says it also controls fungus gnats um what you'll do is you'll sprinkle that on the soil you'll water it in but then you don't want to you don't want to water that plant anymore until that soil kind of dries out um, if you have like plant matter that's on top of the soil, you want to want to gonna you're going to want to collect that out of there because that is what is rotting, and it's it is attracting those flies, and they are laying the eggs in that soil, and their maggots are going to destroy those plant roots, and it's going to end, end up killing your plants. Also, if you're overwatering, you're going to cause root rot, which will kill your plant as well, and that's what's also attracting those flies. So. You need to be careful when you're watering your plants. You don't want your 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 soil soggy. You want it damp. Um, plants do not need to be watered every day unless they're completely drying out every day. Um, I know a lot of people when they first start growing plants, they feel they have to water it every day because they're they're treating a plant like a person. You know, people have to eat every day. Plants are not the same. You have to think about plants outside. They only get water when it rains. Um, so they're adapted to knowing how to, you know, gauge how much water they need. There's also water down in the soil that they that we don't see on the surface. There's water underneath the, uh, the surface of the soil uh, that they actually, you know, their roots are able to get access to and drink up. Now, if you have your plants in containers and they're outside, a lot of times that soil does dry out a little bit faster. But you just need to be aware of the moisture level in there but you don't want to water every day because what will happen is you'll make your plants too soggy um, you'll get root rot you'll get fungus start to growing and then you'll attract those fungus gnats well your plants can still thrive with the fungus gnats but eventually they're going to cause problems if you're seeing gnats flying around um, you want to get them under control because you don't want them reproducing in your home. Um, also, for the adults, you want to use those yellow sticky traps. The, the adults are also attracted to those yellow sticky traps. The same things I was talking about for the the um, squash vine borer. Yellow sticky traps, they attract a lot of different insects. Like I said, that's one of those colors that insects are really attracted to. I've seen these little maggots before with the indoor plant. but didn't know what they were. Queen fee, mine are wilted and look totally dry. It's been in the 90s. 
Only then do I water them. Yes, I have a container garden. Can I send you the pictures? No, I need some professional insight. Yes, you can send me some pictures, Queen Fee. Will buy. So yes, fungus gnats. I see what some other insects people are having issues with. We are talked about caterpillars. Um. Think. I'll say har <clears throat> harlequin bugs. Um, they're a insect that you find on collards and other brassica. They look like stink bugs, but they're red and black, like reddish orangish color with black spots on them. Um, again, those are kind of hard to control when they're the adult stage because they can actually fly. Uh, if you do find them, you want to try to collect them if you can. Uh, some people throw them in like a container of soapy water to drown them. Um, but, uh, if you find eggs or, you know, nymphs, use that spray on them, the neem oil, cast out salt water spray to control the nymphs and the, uh, eggs. If you find eggs, remove eggs. Um, anytime you find eggs on your plants and you don't know what they are, first try to identify them because there are some insects that lay their eggs on your plant that are beneficial for you. Um, that could be things like, uh, lady beetles, um, uh, those um, parasitoid wasps, you might find those little white cocoons on your on your plants. Those are parasitoid wasps that actually lay their eggs in other in soft body insects like caterpillars and stuff. Also, let's talk about wasps because people people are scared of wasps. They don't like wasps, but wasps are actually beneficial, even in yellow jackets. Uh, wasps actually feed on uh, a lot of caterpillars. So if you ever see wasps on your plants, especially like your brassica plants if you're growing collars or kale, and you see wasps flying around and crawling on there, they are not damaging your plant. They're actually hunting for caterpillars and they take those caterpillars and they chew them up. They will eat the liquid from those uh, uh, caterpillars that they found, but they take the meat back to their, their uh, colony and they actually feed the larva the meat. Um, so they're actually predatory and they actually feed, like I say, on caterpillars. Uh, some, uh, some depending on the wasp some of them use other things as well like there's some there's a particular wasp that uses spiders as her um, source of food for her young um, but when you see wasps yellow jackets all that flying around your plants they are actually looking and hunting uh, insects uh, for them to feed on the problem with wasps particularly yellow jackets in the fall is that those caterpillars and things are no longer available because of many of them are either you know pupated or they've gone underground or they're turned into adults so they're, they're, their food source isn't available and so until you know it gets cold they still have to feed they have to still take care of their colony and get prepared for the following year that drives them into human territory and what they'll do is they'll try to find that food uh, usually that you can if you like have a picnic or something and you have meat outside um, they will come in you'll see them taking pieces of lunch meat away and they love sugary drinks uh, because they uh you know they also feed on nectar as well from plants and so they'll try to get that sugar from our you know sources and that's when we usually collide with yellow jackets uh usually the, mostly in the fall because they become very aggressive because they try to find food so anybody have any other questions before i get up out of here you have any um, questions and you didn't want to ask them on here you can always send me a picture uh, and through my um, DM you can DM me a picture or a video if it's a good video sometimes I get videos and I still can't tell what I'm looking at because um, you know people didn't focus in it might be something really small but if you can get a decent picture those are better because um, people's hands move and things and you know, in the videos and then it I don't a lot of times I don't see what they see uh, but if you can get a picture that will, that will work out great um, I also offer uh, entomological uh, consultations if you're dealing with a lot of different things I offer consultations I'll tell you how to control those things and all that um, 
those are $25 for 30 minutes and we can discuss, you know, uh, a plan of action, especially if it's trying to figure out what you're dealing with and plan of action for that. I always find that people, they don't know what to do, so they'll just start spraying any and everything on plants and they'll be killing things. They don't even know what they're killing and things like that. So I would highly recommend that you uh, have a consultation, especially with an entomologist, so they can identify things for you, so they can tell you the, the correct treatment for things. Um, because people, I've, I've, I've seen people spraying vinegar and stuff on their plants and they kill their plants um, because somebody told them that and they said it worked for them, which vinegar is not going to work. Vinegar is going to kill your plants. It's, it's a high nitrogen um, and it will destroy your plant. So don't ever spray vinegar on your plant unless you're trying to get rid of a plant. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so I just wanted to do this live today. I, I rarely do lives on uh, Instagram. I do a lot of lives on YouTube and Facebook. Um, but I thought I'd come on here today and uh, answer some of you guys' questions. So if you have any other questions, you can always DM me um, or send me an email, urbanfarmsister at gmail.com. Thanks for tuning in. I'll talk with you guys later. Bye.